so it is Tuesday morning. None of that much energy today. Yesterday, I had energy to spare. I really did, and I usually don't on Mondays. So that's why I have my Mondays light. I think I have 11 properties, 12 properties on a Monday. Um, I keep it light because it's Monday. And I know I usually don't feel like working all day long until like 6, 7 o'clock at night on a Monday. So, but today's Tuesday and we have a bunch of big properties. And I start off with two small ones and I actually push my own both. Um, but, which I have filmed in the past. But most of them are really big properties, two commercial properties. Um, but anyway, so it is like 64 degrees outside, which is really, really weird. There's a lot of dark clouds, but it's not supposed to rain at all today. But it's still, it's cold in dark clouds. It's not cold, cold. Like, this is fine for me. I'll mow in this all day. Excuse me. But it's, uh, compared to how it has been, it's been in the high 80s, low 90s with extremely high humidity. You guys have heard me mention it in my past videos. In the last, jeez, in the last few videos I've made, um, the air has been so thick, like you can cut it with a knife. But not today, not today. I think the humidity is low and it's going to be a high of like 72 today, but that's not even, it's not even supposed to say it's 70 until like 2 o'clock. But, so it, it's definitely cooler today. That's really odd. It feels like a fall day. But anyway, so in the trailer today, I have the push mower and I have the Xmark 36 Vantage and I have the Great Dane. So we are going to see how the day goes and we're going to see how the Great Dane's going to do. I guess it's D-Day today. I'm not that far from home at any given time of like 15 minutes from home. So that's a good thing in case something goes wrong with this Great Dane. I can fly home, swap it out with the Tiger Cat or something or the walker, probably the tiger cat, because I don't really bag a lot of properties on Tuesday. They're all big, wide open. I just side discharge them. So, that'll be the name of the game today. But hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm hoping no issues with this machine at all. And I mentioned yesterday's video, and the more I think about it, the more I'm probably, I'm probably already 100% determined I'm gonna do it. Um, I have a ton of scrap steel at home, and I am probably going to weld a bigger platform onto the Great Dane because I just I just don't like it. It's pitched up a little bit, like probably almost half inch pitch upward toward where the front of your feet are, and it's not that wide. It's, it's small, like I had mentioned, and I just don't like it. So. I am going to probably weld a bigger platform onto there just so I have more standing room, it's more stable, and yeah, so that's the case. But um, these first couple that I do this morning, I'm not going to film, they're just quick ones. I push mow, and then the third one I do, the backyard is always wet, always wet and it's just the nature of the beast. So usually I end up double cutting it, but a couple weeks ago, instead of doing it with the Tiger Cat, I just pulled the 36 out and uh, I mowed it with the 36 because I had mulching blades on the 36 at the time, which now I have the high lifts on there. But I am, uh, I think I'm gonna do it with the Great Dane today because I have those Eliminator blades on it. And they are mulching blades, so we'll see what happens. Um, real quick, uh, I saw a post on lawn care solo operators on Facebook, and a guy was asking about he couldn't find what he called ultra high lift blades. Um, no matter where he looked, the dealers he called, so on and so forth. Um, if any of you guys are having that problem, this has been in my experience. Um, they actually list them as high lift and super high lift. And I've explained this before in videos with the blades. 
super high lifts. The back wing is almost straight up, and they're pretty damn amazing. I have them on the Turf Tiger, but um, the only place in all the years I've been doing this, the only place I've ever been able to find them is on eBay. They don't make them for every mower, like my X Marks, the Laser Z I had, the X Mark 52 Vantage I had, and the 36 X Mark Vantage I have now. Um, I can only get high lifts. I cannot get super high lifts. I've looked for years and I can't find them. Um, but check your sizes because you can interchange them blades. Like all the blades on that I run on my 52. Um, Tiger Cat, I can put on my 52 Great Dane. They're all the same length with the same center hole. I believe they're 18 inches on the 52. I can't remember. Something like that. But anyway, they're the same exact length and the center hole is 5 8 center hole and they're exactly the same and they will go to either mower. Um, I remember when I had, if you guys remember back far enough, my Ferris 48 walk Hydro Walk Behind. Um, I used to switch blades back and forth all the time from that to my skag walk behind I had um, And with the button walk behind I had I used to swap blades back and forth between all those mowers all the time They're as long as the deck size is the same and the length is the same Those uh, the center hole was 5 8 It was the same on all of them and I used to switch them back and forth So if you're looking for any one specific mower and you can't find the blades for it just type in eBay the length of the blade you need um, in this type of blade. So if you need an 18 inch blade, type in 18 inch mulch blade or 18 inch high lift blade and see what comes up and then click on each one and then go to item description, click on that and usually it tells, okay, 5 8 center hole, half inch center hole. It'll tell what it is. If it's the same as what you're looking for, just order them. They'll fit. Um, you may have to do what I showed in my video yesterday, how the end of the blade, just they were just lightly nicking each other as they were turning. Um, and I just had to grind off the end a little bit, but I mean, to get what you want, sometimes you got to improvise a little. But um, that has been the case. That's been my past experience. So if I, I just thought I'd mention that if any of you guys have experienced um that issue and you can't find what you're looking for just remember a lot of that stuff's interchangeable so if you're looking under a specific mower like with the x marks all my x marks i've had um i believe there is an x mark that doesn't use it but all my x marks i've had has a piece about that tall and about that big around it's flat on the bottom it's geared like there's teeth on it and that goes up into the spindle and then the blade goes on the, a regular bolt goes up through it all so that's why I can't find the ones for X mark and they have to be for X mark because um, Well, I'm sorry that piece goes through the blade because the hole in the blade is like that big So that piece goes through the blade and then it goes up in you got to fit it just right So it goes up into the teeth and then the bolt goes through it all But uh, that's why I haven't been able to find them for the X mark because I can't find any super high lifts that have that big enough hole for that piece to go through the blade um, but anyway, so if you're ever having that problem, that may help you out. We're going to get some footage today of the Great Dane for sure. I'm not positive how many lawns I'm going to film it on. I know one for sure, and I just want to do it because I think two years in a row I made, uh, or maybe it's just one year, I don't know, but it seems like I've always made like the first mowing video of the year I've made in this yard, and I have it today. It's my one, two, three, it's my fourth lawn this morning, and uh and I filmed the Great Dane 48 in that yard, mowing that backyard. And uh, it's just a small backyard. But uh, I wanted to I wanted to do it today f to film this this Great Dane in that backyard as well. Just because, I don't know, maybe it's just weird, but I want to do it. So it's going to be that one, and then I'm going to do, um, I'll see what else I can film. But All right, let's get started. i got to get started anyway. I'll catch up with you guys in a few minutes. Real quick, because I just got a message. Somebody sent me a private message that said, thank you so much for the videos. I'm just starting off, and your videos really helped me out a lot. That's awesome. I'm happy to hear. I love seeing that on the comments under the videos, but he sent me a private message, and this is why. He said, uh, I noticed, he goes, I've been going through all your videos, and I noticed that you've had some problems with trolls. 
over the years, whatever. And uh, he says, I hope that it doesn't ever stop you from making videos. Um, no, it never will. And in my opinion, if you don't have trolls or people hitting that dislike button, because that just shows that they're jealous. If you don't have any trolls and you're pumping out a lot of videos and you don't have people hating on you, as far as I'm concerned, you ain't working hard enough. So, no, they don't bother me at all, for the record, anyone that's wondering. And it, it will never, ever, ever deter me. Um, I think I've mentioned that before. But, no, no matter how many dislikes I get, no matter how many nasty phone calls, no matter how many nasty emails, it, it will never stop me. Ever. Ever. Until somebody's right in front of my face threatening me. Um... I, I won't even say until then because I still won't stop. And uh, but anyway, that that's either here or there. Um, it, no, I don't think any of the bigger channels, which I wouldn't consider myself a bigger one, like Blake, Brian, uh, Mike from Something to Look at. Those guys all have thousands of subscribers. For any of them, it, the trolls will never shut them down. So if you're really that worried about it. Um, the only big one that I think trolls ever had a part in shutting down was Greg. Um, and I have a lot of respect for Greg. I like him a lot, so don't get me wrong when I say this. But for the one person I always swore to God, you should never let trolls bother you and you should do your thing and don't let people bother you. It obviously took its toll on him. So for the one person that said you should never let it get to you, it got to him. So, um, and that's in no way disrespect to Greg. I like Greg a lot. He's a hard working man. He, I think he's... And I don't like his channel now. I, I think it's, I wouldn't even call it freaky. I'd say it's just demented. But I, I think that's what he's going for. So kudos to him. He's doing what he likes to do. It makes him happy and uh, whatever. But anyway, um, no, don't ever worry about that with me. cut's pretty nice. I'm definitely happy with the cut. That was set at three and a half. I can't remember my 48. I could have swore the 48 went in quarter inch increments. Um, this Great Dane does not. It goes in half inch increments. Like the Turf Tiger. I don't like that because 90% of my properties I cut at three and a quarter. But that's alright. I can make do. Um, there is, let's see here, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. 
there is not a huge difference between three and a quarter and three inches. So that one, like I said, is it, I cut it at three and a half inches. It's cutting pretty good. Um, and it's driving good, it's running good. But man, I, I'm a little awkward on it, as you could probably tell. Um, that's how I was before the, uh, when I had the 48, I was awkward on it at first until I mowed the church that I used to have because it was a big property, big open property. By the time I was done with that, I was pretty much used to it. Um, but the controls on that, like versus a right stand, are very jumpy and uh, more jumpy than my Xmark Vantage, which is also more jumpy than uh, than the right standard. But I'll get used to it pretty quick. I'm on my way to another one of my real big properties, a big commercial one. So by the time I'm done with that, I should be all right, pretty used to it. But uh, there was another thing with that mower. When I got it, that deck was pitched an inch and a half to the front. You never want more than a quarter inch of pitch. Um, I try to get all my decks right around an eighth inch, which is recommended, and that's usually best. So I, um, it's at a, it's at about an eighth inch now. I fixed that like a week ago, um, so it's right on now. So I think it's pretty much cutting at where it says. But I don't know. We'll get some more in with it, and uh, like I said, I only cut that three and a half. I just took a little bit off the top. I just wanted to see what it was going to do at that height. But uh, we'll go from there. See what's next. Okay, so you can see probably a ton of grass laying here. I'm cutting this on three and a half. I bagged this on like six times already this year. This guy over fertilizes and he just says, charge me more, which I did. I raised it up last year, but 
and then all the tons of rain that we've got but let me see if I can get you a better view it's cutting really good but the one thing I remember is you have to go slow with these blades they don't I don't know if you can see that nice spot where there's no laying grass but it's cutting really good like beautiful cut but now I have to go over this and double cut it to get rid of this grass because I don't have a bagging mower with me so I had to slow it down I was flying and I was leaving tons of grass sticking up and I'm like what the hell I know these mowers cut better than this and I remembered it I usually run high lifts and I can do that but not with these mulching. So here we go, let's double cut it.
All right, it doesn't look too bad, double cut. With those mulching blades, they don't disperse grass for crap either. Usually, I mean, I've posted a picture of this. You guys have seen this yard. This yard stripes like there's no tomorrow. Um, one thing I did notice, see these right here? These pins? Yeah, they weren't in there. And when I was mowing that big commercial property earlier, there's batteries banging all around, trying to flop out of here. Um, so I stopped at Home Depot and I picked those up. And uh, I put them in there to tighten it up so the battery's not moving that much. I have to tighten it up more when I get home. But uh, I'm having an issue. One of these spindles, can you see it? Look at all the grease coming out of it. And all these spindles are tight, but look at this one if it ain't too hot. Yeah, let me see if I can make it do it again. That spindle's moving, brand new spindle. And I know I have it tight on there. It definitely should not be moving like that. So, I don't know, something's not right. I emailed the guy already and said, hey, one of these spindles is bad. And he said, send me a picture of all the packaging. And I said, dude, you shipped these to me a week ago. I just got them in recently. I, it was the first time I've ever run it. I don't have the packaging anymore. So I've been in this industry a long time. I'm telling you, there's something wrong with one of them spindles. The bearings are shot in, wasn't put together the right way or whatever. But the problem is there's a bad one and he needs to replace that one spindle. So I'm waiting for him to get back to me. I took a picture of it. I already cleaned the grease off, but the grease was like a half inch thick coming out of there all the way around. I cleaned it off, but I took a picture of that and sent it to him too. So we'll see what happens. All right, I gotta blow this place off. So the guy just messaged me back and he said, do you want a refund or do you want me to replenish the spindles? And I said, I just want one new one. The other two were perfect. I already left you five star feedback from the order. I said, there, uh, the other, there's nothing wrong with the other two. They're working perfect just as they should. It's just the one spindle. I don't want my money back. I just want you to send me a new spindle. I said, I'll even send a broke one back to you. You can look at it and find out what's wrong. Maybe, maybe it was built on a Friday and they were in a hurry to get out of work. Who the hell knows? I don't know. But I said that one, there's something wrong with the one. I just, I just want a new spindle. So hopefully he'll just send me a new one and I'll send him that one back if he wants it back. Um, but it'll take me 10 minutes to swap out that spindle. I'm not worried about that. But, uh, yeah, I, so here's my thoughts. I'm already, I should be like three lawns ahead of where I'm at right now. I, uh, <laughs> I'm way behind with stopping at Home Depot to get those pieces to hold the battery in so it wouldn't fall. I can't believe I didn't even notice they weren't in there. Um, it's not like they were in there and fell out. They were just never there. So, um, I have to, uh, or I'm way behind because of that. I spent way too long at that last lawn. I double cut it and, I mean, you guys saw it on film. It's, you guys probably think it looks good. I still think it looks like shit. I'm not very happy about that. But I, um, I need to, uh, I need to just remember to bring the walker with me next Tuesday and just bag that. It'd have been faster to bag it. It'd have looked a hundred times better and it just would have been better all the way around. So my my thoughts on this Great Dane so far, um, I'm taking these blades off. They mulch fantastic. Um, they leave a nice cut. The problem is, is it throws a lot of stuff way out the deck but a lot of stuff it just drops out the deck too and uh i don't like that i can if if i ran high lifts on there i'd still be able to disperse the grass if i you know if i'm double cutting it anyway the only reason i really ever run gators in the spring is to avoid double cutting if i can which that's not happening with this deck when i run these on the tiger cat um it doesn't dump anything out the deck and that's because the mouth on the deck of the tiger cat is that wide and on the great dane it's that wide so i think that has a lot to do with it but um i need to put the high lifts on and i think that'll make all the difference in the world so i'm gonna put the high
dialers back on it when I get home today and then I'll, I'll run it like that tomorrow and see how well it cuts. Um, I'm just going to make sure I re-grease that spindle again so that it's, I don't seize it right up. But I'll just keep plenty of grease in it to keep it going. I've had that problem before. It's, this isn't the first time by any means. But, um, but yeah, that and I am definitely, definitely, like I mentioned yesterday's video, I am definitely welding a wider platform on that where you stand. Um, I'll probably do it tonight, to be honest with you, because, you know, I'm just, I'm having a hell of a time standing on it. Every time I hit a little bump, my feet slide back, and uh, one of these times I'm going to slide right off that damn thing, so I'm going to figure out what I have for steel at home, and I'm going to just weld a wider piece on there, and uh, so that'll, that'll take care of that. But other than that, you know, I've got a down pad, just like I said I would after riding it a few times on a few bigger properties. So, you know, I can fly with it now. The problem is I can't fly with it because of those blades. But I'll swap the blades out tonight. I'll re grease that spindle again and I'll weld that wider platform on there. And then I think tomorrow will be good to go. I'm probably not going to film anything else after this because I'm sure this video is pretty long already. And I've just lost too much time already today. Thanks for watching guys.